My name is Michael Fahon, a Toronto-based photographer. I shoot portraits and weddings all year round, both in studio and on location. In the warmer months, I shoot professional sports across the city. When shooting sports, I need autofocus that just works. When I got the Z6 II, I had to see how it performed in the diverse settings that I shoot in. And I have to say the first thing that impressed me was how well it can focus on very fast and unpredictable movements. There are so many moments that are here and gone in the blink of an eye. Goals, cheers from the crowd or the split second the player makes contact. I now have 14 frames per second to get those shots with less blackout time in the electronic viewfinder. Shooting weddings is a different story as you would expect. I'm a silent observer. It's so important for me to capture candid, intimate moments of the couple without drawing attention to myself or getting in the way. The ability to shoot silently ensures I can do that. I'm always looking for creative angles and the tilting screen lets me shoot high or low while still keeping my subject perfectly in sight. People who shoot events know you need to shoot a lot and the much larger buffer on the Z6 II means I'm not worried about filling it up. You not only have the fastest CF Express card available to you, but with a second card slot using the fast UHS-2 SD card, your work is always backed up. The rush of a game and the emotions of a wedding day play around with your perception of time. It speeds up and slows down, but my job is always the same. I need to capture these moments of excitement and connection in seconds. The Z6 II checks all the boxes to make that happen. Welcome everyone to another episode of Nikon TV. I'm your host Chris Oganek and we're here today to talk about two really exciting new products. This is the Z7 II and the Z6 II cameras. Both of them just announced by Nikon along with another accessory being a new battery grip. We'll talk about that specifically a little bit later. Now it's not going to be just me talking today. Um, I am going to have two special guests. Um, joining us later on today, each individually. Uh, we're gonna have Michael Fahoon um, coming back to, uh, to Nikon TV. I did interview him a couple months ago. And we're also gonna have Nikon ambassador, Victoria Hack. Uh, both of them are gonna be coming on to kind of share some of their experiences shooting with the new cameras. Uh, Victoria had the Z7 II and Michael had the Z6 II. Um, both of them kind of pair up really well because Michael actually already owns uh, his own personal Z6 and Victoria already shoots with the Z7. So really good for, for them to kind of give their, um, their thoughts on some of the benefits of the, of the cameras. Um, now before I get into the cameras, I am going to mention, uh, just as a small little Easter egg, that last episode when I had Mark Cruz on here talking about the new Z 50mm f1.2 and I was talking about how much I was really looking forward to shooting with it, well, not only have I shot with it, I'm actually using it right now. Uh, this is actually being shot entirely at 1.2. So hopefully uh, I don't stray too much because uh, I'm quite shallow depth of field. But so far I am absolutely loving this lens. But that is not what we're here to talk about today. Today we're here to talk about the two new bodies, the Z7 II and the Z6 II. Now, there are a lot of major upgrades with these cameras. Um, we now have dual card slots, one CF Express XQD card, and then one um, UHS-2 SD card. That's amazing for a lot of photographers. We also have dual processors that gives incredibly large buffer sizes now, three and three and a half times uh, what the original cameras were, much faster write speeds as well, which enables us to shoot faster. So we get up to 10 or 14 frames a second with the Z7 II and Z6 II. So a lot of major improvements. Um, just because of that, um, but then we're also getting autofocus improvements. So we have better tracking capabilities. We now have eye detect in video. We have a new, um, the, the, well, we, we have the same wide area large autofocus option, but now you can kind of mask out what the rest of the um, 
camera is able to see and only use eye detect within that small little box instead of having to use the auto area which looks at everything. So if you're in a crowded room or if you have a lot of different uh, people around then you're able to really kind of focus down as to what the camera is able to see. Uh, on top of all those benefits, the cameras are able to even see an even lower light than what the previous Z6 and Z7 cameras could. Basically, cut the light in half of what the original Z6 and Z7 could see in, and that's now what the Z6 II and Z7 II are able to see in. So, major, major improvements. I'm not going to go and talk about those a, a ton, though, because to be totally honest, every other reviewer, every other first impressions, uh, even our first look video, um, goes into those quite heavily. So, what I want to talk about are two of the, I'll say smaller upgrades that to be honest are really gonna make a big difference for a lot of shooters. Uh, they may not get talked about quite as much when you look at other reviews. So I really wanna focus on those couple things. The first of it, not actually being a part of the Z7 or Z6 II bodies. Uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is actually the new grip. This is the MBN11. So the first thing people are gonna ask about this is, does it have a vertical shutter? And the answer, answer is absolutely yes. So not only do we have a vertical shutter, we have a function button, we have front and rear command dials, which is great. On the back, we have an AF on button and a dedicated autofocus uh, joystick. So all of those features are basically going to give basically everything that everybody's asked for in terms of a grip for the last couple of years, we now have, this is what people have been waiting for. Um, the feel and comfort of it is really, really good. And on top of that, the weather sealing capability of the MBN11 is the same as the Z7 II and Z6 II. So it's fully weather sealed against the elements. Now, yes, we do have a vertical shutter and that is gonna be very useful for, um, uh, for, for some shooters, but First and foremost, this is a battery grip. So you're gonna almost double your, your battery life by going and using, um, if you use, uh, the two ENEL 15 batteries in the actual grip itself. Now, one difference though is, if you are familiar with our MBN11, uh, that's what we had for the Z6 and Z7, it had two battery doors, one on the left, one on the right. Well, we can't actually have a battery door on the right anymore because of this um, shutter. So how do we actually access it? Well, your one battery is accessed here, flip the little orange switch, and your one battery is out. But if you wanna get access to this second battery, there's a white switch here, you flick that, and out it comes as an entire tray where you have both batteries. Now, the nice thing is, once you actually have this in here, the camera is always going to draw battery from the A battery, that's the one, so we have A and B. A being the one that you can very easily access. So the camera's automatically gonna go and take uh, power from that A battery first. So as long as there's charge in that A battery, it's always gonna be taken from there. But what if you're shooting a video? What if you're uh, shooting time lapses and you need an uninterrupted power feed to the camera? Well, if you notice that either your A battery has completely died or that it's just getting low, it's fully hot swappable. So you can pop it out and then as soon as you take this out, the charge switches to B, which still powers the camera without any interruption. You can go get a new fully charged A and plug that in and you're good to go. So that's nice having it be hot swappable. Um, one other little feature I'm gonna talk about with this camera is the USB port. Now, why am I bringing up the USB port? Well, a couple things. A, if you wanted to charge the batteries in the actual grip um, while they're connected to the camera, and the camera is off, you can go and plug in a compatible USB-C cable, plug it there, plug it into a, a computer, a AC socket, and the actual batteries inside will charge. But we also have USB power delivery with the new Z7 II and Z6 II, which means you plug in while the camera is on, and you can plug in another uh, USB-C compatible cable, you plug it into a compatible computer or a, um, a portable battery pack, and the batteries won't be charged, but they will be powered. So the camera will actually receive uninterrupted power from your external source through the USB power delivery that we have. Okay, well, we had that with the Z5, that's great. So what does this grip do and why, we need, why do we need a second USB port? Well, in some situations, let's say you're in a studio setting and you wanna be shooting for an extended period of time, you're doing a really um, 
a really large shoot there. You have an art director and you have models and you want to kind of do it all without having to worry about batteries. Well, you can go and use this USB port on the actual grip to go and power the camera. And then on the actual camera itself, you can go and use the USB-C port here if you want to tether. So you can go and use our Camera Control Pro 2, you can go and use Lightroom, whatever software you use to, to tether, you're able to do both power and tethering because of this extra USB-C cable. Doesn't seem like a big deal. Not everybody may use it all the time, but I think it's, it's important enough to kind of point out because I think it's cool and it kind of shows a really nice forethought with this, uh, with this grip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and bring in Michael now. So uh, Michael, if you're familiar with him in the, uh, one of the last uh, Nikon TV episodes that we had him on here, he shoots a lot of sports, he shoots a lot of weddings, a lot of portraiture. So because of that, and the fact that he already owns a Z6, um, we were able to get a Z6 II into his hands um, for a not, not too long of a time. It was a pretty short uh, timeline that he had to, uh, to shoot with it, but he made the schedule work. He did an amazing job. Got some fantastic photos, not only on the sports side, but also really creative looking uh, wedding shots as well. He really didn't have a lot of time to pull this together. So we're really excited that he was able to be part of the product project, but also how just he just knocked it out of the park. Just did such an amazing job. So let's go get Michael on here and talk to him and get his impressions on the actual camera. Michael, welcome back to Nikon TV. It was great having you as a guest before, but it's even better having you today because as I've already kind of told the people, uh, you are here to kind of give your first impressions on the new Z6 II camera. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's exciting to be involved in such a, um, a launch with, uh, with Nikon and I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, I, I know how excited you were to be part of it, but I also know how stressful it was because we didn't give you a lot of time to, to actually get all of this done. So uh, I think we all just want to say thank you very much for working under those time constraints. It was really tough, but I think looking at the images that you were able to pull, uh, not only from your sports shoot, but also from the wedding side of it as well, uh, I, I got to tell you, I was blown away by them. I absolutely loved every single one of them. So, um... I'm not going to really kind of talk about all the big specs because I know that as a sports photographer, you are never going to say no to 14 frames a second. You're never going to say no to a bigger buffer. You're never going to say no to having dual cars that allow you to back it up. So for you, I kind of want to ask a few of the uh, smaller things that, that maybe uh, won't get talked about quite as much. One of them being uh, the blackout time because when you're shooting any sports, with, well, any action, doesn't have to be sports, but any action with any camera, whether it's a DSLR, whether it's mirrorless, there's always gonna be some sort of blackout time where you can't see. As you're tracking your subjects, you are gonna have, for a split second, not be able to see them. Did you notice any significant difference with the Z6 II versus the Z6? Yes, um, from the Z6 to the Z6 II, I can see quite a large, uh, less, much less uh, blackout time and this is something that I'm, I'm really looking forward to because uh, you know I'm so used to shooting uh, with a DSLR with absolutely zero blackout time and to be able to have you know a mirrorless camera which is where we're moving to now uh, but personally in terms of shooting both weddings and sports as well the fact that I'm able to shoot with a lot less blackout time is, is really amazing and I'm really really impressed with how much I could actually follow the live action just like I would with my my D4S and my dad DSLR. And that's that's really key, I think, because I actually, while we were having you shoot with the camera, I couldn't tell you every single spec on it. So I didn't even mention the lower blackout time. We kind of talked touched on the larger features that we would kind of want you to look at. But it's really kind of interesting because uh, I'm kind of, I, I know all the specs, so I look for certain things with the new cameras, but it's really good to hear that you, who didn't even necessarily know that there was less blackout time, found that it was much easier to track your moving subject. That's, that, that for me is a, is a really big plus um, to, to kind of notice that right off the bat. And now you'd mentioned that you obviously don't even, don't shoot just sports, you shoot a lot of weddings as well. Um, one of the other 
major improvements of the cameras is the fact that in low light, the cameras are actually able to, to focus much better than the previous Z6 and Z7. Now, with your wedding shoot, um, you kind of started off with the um, really nice lighting, with the sun just kind of uh, two thirds of the way up. And then as the shoot went further and further in, the light levels got lower and lower. So uh, at the end of the shoot, you were shooting with some strobes, you were shooting with the couple walking down the beach. Um, with those type of shots where obviously your subject is moving, but the light levels are quite low. Did you have any issues at all with the autofocusing or was the camera basically right there the entire time? Um, I must say that I'm actually very, very impressed on how fast the, the autofocus was in low light, and especially when the subject is moving, because it's, it's sort of easier when your subject is kind of standing and static, and you know, autofocus is pretty decent in, the, in that case, but for, for my subject moving, I actually uh, told the bride and the groom to kind of just run down the beach and just be happy, and I was really, really impressed about how that the Z6 II could actually follow and keep track of my subject, not just in good light, but obviously in, in, in very low light. Right, and, and that's kind of key because most cameras these days, they can go and focus uh, at noon when the sun is perfectly out there, but it really stresses a camera and you really kind of figure out how far you can push it as those light levels get, uh, get quite low. Um, now, I'm gonna kind of throw in a little bit of a plug here. Um, so everybody who's watching at home, uh, Michael's actually gonna be part of a couple other of our social programs over the next couple weeks. So be on the lookout on not only on Instagram, but also on Facebook. Uh, Michael's gonna be doing a Stay Inspired um, image where he's gonna post an image or we're gonna post an image um, of one of the shots that he selected from the, um, uh, from the Z6 II launch. And then you're able to go on Instagram, you're able to ask him questions about it, ask him what you thought about the camera. He, he'll basically be there for, for about an hour answering any questions that you guys have. So that's the first uh, time you're gonna be able to talk to him. Uh, Michael's also gonna be doing a Stay Inspired conversation where he's gonna be basically doing a 15, 20, 25 minute long presentation um, on just what he thought about the Z6 II. So that's gonna be streamed live live on uh, Facebook. So that'll be in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you tune in for that and you stay tuned to our uh, social channels to go and get as much information as you can. All right, so um, Michael, uh, one last question before I let you go, because I don't want to spend too much time, uh, take too much of your, of your time on the day. So as much as um, I think it's pretty obvious that, that you were um, uh, you, you were quite taken with the, with the Z6 II. There was also another product that you shot quite heavily with uh, when I was there on your, on your shoots. And it was not the body, it was actually the lens. So uh, I had brought a number of different uh, super telephoto lenses. You have the 200, the 400. So you have a bunch of already uh, really good exotics. But I said, you know what? I'm gonna bring a couple. And in case you wanna go and play with them, you can. I brought the 500 mil PF. But I also brought the 120 to 300 f2.8, and I'm pretty sure you did not let that lens leave your sight the entire day that, that you were shooting with it. Uh, can, you, can you give me just a, a couple quick um, thoughts on that lens and kind of what you liked about it? Oh, the, you're absolutely right. Uh, I, I put on the lens on the camera and I was you know, doing my shots and I just couldn't let go of that lens. And, it was, it was just a couple of things, right? Uh, the fact that you can shoot such a large range of uh, uh, focal length on a 2.8 lens and maintain absolute sharpness was really good. It just felt good. The focus was obviously as, uh, as fast as it could be because of the, of the 2.8 wide uh, aperture as well as the Z6 II. Uh, but hey, the, the lens is absolutely great. It's a, it's a piece of the lens. The, the focal length is perfect for you know outdoor sports, soccer, uh, football, as well as indoor for basketball, for volleyball. It, it, it's a perfect lens, uh, focal length for, for that. So and you know, like you know, zoom is always my, my go-to for sports because of how much um, I can you know stay in the same place and get a wide range of shots, right? So, but. I was really, really impressed with the lens. It's really, really sharp, fast, and um, yeah, I look forward to, to making some more images with that, with that lens. I really <laughs> like it.
Well, I, I have to say I am sorry for introducing you to that lens because I have a feeling you're going to want to be borrowing it and, uh, and using it quite a bit more in the future. So I apologize for, for kind of being the, uh, for, for teasing you with it. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I'll be back for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Michael, thank you very much. I hope everybody enjoyed uh, hearing your thoughts on the camera as much as I did. And hopefully I'll have you back. You'll be the first three-time uh, guest on Nikon TV, hopefully sometime in the future. Awesome, thanks for having me. All right, so that was Michael giving his impressions on the Z6 II. Next up, we're going to jump right into it here. It's Victoria. She's one of our Nikon ambassadors. Uh, she, as I mentioned earlier, already owns a Z7, uses it heavily. Um, she does, well, she's really well known for her landscape uh, photography work, which is what we mostly had her, her shooting with this project. Um, but she does a little bit of everything. She does wedding, she does portraiture, she does some action when it comes her way. She really kind of shoots anything and everything, but her landscape work is just phenomenal. So again, just like Michael, she didn't have a lot of time to, uh, to get to know the camera super well. Um, but let's go figure out what uh, she thought of the cameras. All right, welcome, Victoria, Nikon TV. You are here, finally. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you, Chris. It's great to be here. Um, so I've already kind of given everybody um, at home a little bit of a backstory, uh, told them that you obviously have been shooting your, well, obviously your Nikon ambassador, that, that kind of goes without saying. Uh, so you're a Nikon ambassador, you're shooting heavily with the Z7 already, so we kind of thought it perfect for you to get the Z7 II in your hands to really kind of uh, put it to its uh, tests, shoot some amazing landscapes, because not everybody knows, but you, you live out in British Columbia, you have amazing landscapes around you. So we didn't have a lot of time to go and give you the camera, but you really kind of did a lot in the, in the short amount of time that you, that you had. So we're really happy that you're a part of this project. Thank you, it was really exciting. <laughs> um, so I, I had a, a couple questions that I, that I had for you about the new Z7 II and kind of what you thought about it. Now, as I kind of mentioned, you live out, um, out in British Columbia. So a lot of times when you're shooting, you're going out into the wilderness. Like you are, you are not around. You are not sitting at home, kind of walking outside, taking some cute pictures, then going back home. You are out for days at a time sometimes. So you don't always have time to go and bring computers and hard drives and be able to back up on the go and just kind of be able to do anything you want. So having the dual card slots, does that actually make a big difference to you in your shooting? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just not always being able to have that computer or, or external hard drive. It's a huge peace of mind to know that it's already backed up. So yeah, that's really great. And, you know, from a weight perspective as well, you know, quite often I'm on a helicopter and, you know, you can't take a laptop necessarily. There just isn't the weight for it. So it's a really, it's really wonderful to have that. And um, yeah, also being able to use the SD cards for me because I'm, living in a town that doesn't have a dedicated camera store um, just being able to get hold of, of, of an SD card is way easier than the CF Express and I also have you know they're, they're cheaper and I do have a kind of a whack load of those already so it, it is um, it's an additional help to, to be able to use that dual card slot for sure yeah yeah, that, that's kind of cool because a lot of people don't think of, they just think in the day of Amazon and in the day of just being able to order anything from anywhere. Sometimes if you're in a smaller town, you don't always have access to, to being able to just ship things into you. And to be totally honest, we want to support our, our local dealers. So if your local dealer doesn't have the card that you need, then what are you going to do? So that's actually a really, really good point. Yeah, and you can be in a small town somewhere and, you know, that there's just a local, you know, just some kind of local store. They're way more likely to have um, the, the other card, the SD card. So I found it, you know, I think it will be really, really helpful for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Now, I've kind of mentioned the fact that you shoot a lot of landscapes. That's kind of what you're known for, at least on Instagram. Um, also, your, your dog, Jack. Um, but... With a lot of your landscapes, you're shooting a lot of uh, long exposure shots. Now, with the new Z7 II, one of the improvements in there is you can actually set in camera up to 900 seconds long of an exposure. Now, normally when you are going and shooting your, your um, long exposure shots, when you're using your ND filters, how do you actually time it using the original Z7? Like, well, what's your, what's your usual process? Um, usually I, I have my phone in hand so I just use the stopwatch function on that oh. and I mean there are times 
times if I'm in the back country and my phone is either dead or um, you know I'm really trying to conserve battery I'm just counting in my head so I'm literally standing there counting so to, to have that facility in camera is is I'm very excited about that yeah that's really oh, cool that's cool now I've, I've kind of mentioned the fact that you do landscapes you're uh, amazing at that but what a lot of people may not realize is you do pretty much everything else. You do weddings, you do portraiture, you do fast action if you if you need to. So there's you, you're kind of the, the jack of all trades. You'll literally do anything and everything and, and do a, an amazing job at it. So I think when people look at some of the features on the Z7 II, they'll say, okay, well, Victoria, she shoots landscapes. Why would she care about the bigger buffer or the faster um, 10 frames per second? But those actually will come in uh, quite handy for you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just as an example, the other day I was shooting next to a lady. Um, we were both shooting a woman wearing kind of a long flowing dress in a landscape situation, but we were trying to capture the movement of the fabric in the wind. So being able to, to, to shoot off a whole bunch of frames, unfortunately for her, even with my, with my Z7, you know, I was shooting off a whole bunch of frames. She was maybe getting four out of it and I was banging off a whole bunch. But with the new camera, you know, that added um, frame rate and buffer is going to be extremely handy you know and for shooting you know dogs kids all sorts of different um possibilities i'm i'm just i'm i'm excited to, to have that additional um feature yeah for sure okay now i don't want to take up too much of your time um i know that the people online do want to uh hear more about um your shooting now i will actually mention that in a couple weeks um everybody should tune in to actually we're going to be doing a couple um uh, we call them stay inspired conversations. So Victoria is actually going to be um, featured on a couple of those. She's going to be doing a stay inspired uh, photo on Instagram in which she'll show one of the images that she shot uh, for our launch program. And then you guys can go and ask her any questions. She'll be online to, to answer them for you. And then she'll also be doing on Facebook uh, one of our stay inspired conversations where she goes on and she's just gonna, going to basically talk about her experience with the new Z7 II and kind of what she thought about it. So that's just a little plug for a couple of weeks down the road. Uh, make sure you watch our um, social media uh, ch channels for that to be able to, to talk about it. So before I quickly let you go, I'm going to have one more question. And I, it's, I know you're expecting it to be about the Z7 II camera, but it's not. Um, you were actually one of the first people to shoot with the Z14-24 f2.8. Uh, we included that um, amazingly in the, in the package that we sent you. So you're one of the first people to actually be able to, to get out and play with that. Can you just give me a couple quick pointers? Don't have to be super long. Um, just a couple quick points about what you, what you thought about that lens. It was fantastic. So I'm um, off the bat, just so super sharp, like just crystal sharp. So I'm really impressed with that. Um, also just the weight of it. You know, I've used the 14 to 24, the, the DSLR lens, which again was a great lens, but there's a huge uh, weight difference there. So this new one is, is so light in comparison. And then I'm also really excited about the possibility of putting those filters into the back of the lens. So being able to do that to, to maybe not have to carry a set of filters somewhere um, I'm pretty excited about being able to try that out too that's true because it's kind of the one-two punch of not only is the lens smaller and lighter but if you can go and shed some weight using uh, not 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 using your large filter set yeah, as well totally. that actually could really oh wow yeah yeah so yeah pretty pretty excited I've been really looking forward to that lens I know there's a lot of people who are very excited about that Yes, there's a lot of people watching right now that are very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was very, very excited when I got that. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, I won't leave you any longer. Um, so I want to say, Victoria, thank you very, very much for, for joining us today. Thank you for, very much for helping us with the launch program, for coming up with all these amazing images that you were able to come out of nowhere. When, you, when, when I told you how little time you had, I could kind of see your eyes bugging out going, I only have how much time with the camera? So you did an absolutely amazing job. I've been kind of throwing up a few images over here um, as we've been talking, so people have been able to see them. So thank you very much. And I'll try and make sure that uh, that we get you back on as, a, as another uh, guest for Nikon TV, because I know there's so much you can talk about, whether it's uh, focus stacking techniques, whether it's, to be honest, just your dog, Jack. I know people just want to, they just see the pictures of it and they just absolutely love them. There's so much uh, behind the scenes stories that, uh, that just makes them even more interesting when you know about it. So until the next time I see you on here, um, have, a, have a great day. Thank you so much, Chris. Great chatting with you. See ya. 
All right, so that was my couple little tidbits on the things that I thought you guys would like about the camera. Uh, then we talked to Michael and we talked to Victoria, both giving their impressions on the Z7 II and Z6 II, what they thought about them. So hopefully you found that as interesting as I did. Um, I'm going to leave you with one last thing at the end of this episode. Um, I'm going to throw into the links below uh, our Nikon Canada first look video. It really just kind of goes through in depth all of the information about the Z7 II and Z6 II. Really good information, shows you some example shots as well. So go check out that link if you want to find out even more about these cameras. So until the next episode, my name is Chris Ogunek. I'll see you next time.